Welcome back. You're with us here on Editor's Roundtable. Uh, we have one of the largest fund managers in the country now joining us. Uh, Prashant Kemka is founder of White Oak Capital. Uh, Prashant, great to have you with us here on the program. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Prashant, this side. Uh, you know, uh, how are things looking now, Prashant? Is there a bit of an earnings risk developing? I'm asking that in the context of the run-up that we've seen in the markets. Q1 earnings disappointed consensus expectations for the first time in many, many quarters. And we've seen some cut to FY23 and 24 earnings as well. How are things looking according to you? Certainly. First of all, thank you, Prashant, for having me on the uh, roundtable show. I seem like I'm the one who's uh, quite overdressed for Friday <laughs> evening. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, for the market, I think if you look at the backdrop, uh, and I'm not saying it's uh, necessarily entirely justified, but uh, the optimism that you hear from across the spectrum, uh, not just market men, um, not just investors, but uh, uh, corporates, large, mid-sized or small, pretty much across sectors, particularly the more domestic oriented, is uh, quite unlike um, or, or the last time that I can recollect such optimism would be, you know, 2014-15 timeframe, post the elections then, uh, or prior to that, maybe 2007 timeframe. So very few times I can recollect such high degree of optimism in the um, corporate world, uh, be it large or mid or small, as I said. Uh, now, how much of that actually turns out to be true uh, uh, remains to be seen. Uh, but if you go by with that uh, backdrop, uh, then, and if that backdrop is for real, if that optimism is for real, then very likely the actual corporate sales and earnings uh, can turn out to be a lot stronger over the next um, year, two years or so, compared to what estimates are there. Okay, Prashant, hi, welcome to our weekend show and thank you for joining us. Uh, it's great to hear that optimism has picked up, right? But we're also noticing that a lot of domestic consumption-facing companies are doing exceptionally well. It's return of the capital good laggards now. Uh, private sector banks have picked up in a big way. Autos have come back in a huge way. Where do your sectoral preferences lie? Hi, Sonia. So we, uh, obviously a lot of this gets priced in well before anyone realizes, right? Uh, so we don't necessarily uh, have sectoral preferences based on what is currently showing strong strength in the um, real uh, world because a very important you have to look at where the valuations as well. But having said that, Sonia, uh, consistent with uh, what we've always had pretty much structurally, uh, the team finds continues to find a lot of attractive opportunities opportunities in the private sector financial space. So that would be the area of largest exposure, uh, followed by consumer in general. So it can be uh, discretionary plus staples. I would say more so discretionary, uh, which includes autos that you uh, referred to. So consumer, disc but beyond auto also quite a lot of retail um, and, and other segments of, uh, you know, consumption. Um, so consumer discretionary, consumer staples, uh, also considerable exposure to IT services, uh, though that is different from was it this domestic oriented sector. So we always like to have a good balance in the portfolio. Um, and, and IT services obviously more export oriented and it's not seeing the same strength uh, or while the IT companies are seeing the strength right now, everyone is worried that they're going to see weakness because of the global slowdown and whatnot. But these three, I would say, are the largest sectorally uh, segments represented in the portfolio. Besides that, we have fairly good exposure in, you know, uh, pharmaceuticals or healthcare in general, chemicals and so on. So very well uh, hi, Prashant. This is Nimesh here. Uh, you know, you briefly spoke about uh, technology where, uh, you know, you, you, you have made a lot of money in the technology stocks, especially the mid-cap IT names in the last couple of years. But now, uh, I guess in the last six odd months, it has been a bit of an underperformer for you. Broadly, what's your sense uh, in the mid-cap IT names? Because valuations 
while the stock prices have corrected, the valuations have not corrected that much. So, are you getting a sense that from year on, uh, the the entire in, uh, you know uh, technology names should outperform, given that you know uh, the number seems to be quite strong, and the commentary seems to be quite strong for most of the uh, IT names so far. Certainly, uh, certainly high image. So it's very difficult to say over the next three, six, uh, nine months. It's very possible uh, if the U.S. goes into a recession that there would be some slowdown in demand as two thirds of the demand is for IT um, services companies coming from the U.S. But I think at this point, uh, it is very well anticipated and more than um, more than baked into expectations for these IT companies. So uh, it could very well be the case that the they are actually reporting uh, somewhat of a weakening um, trend in demand and yet the stocks do uh, well in face of that, just as the stocks have declined over the last six months without any material sign of slowdown in demand, right? Well ahead of the anticipated slowdown. So it's possible six months down the line, they might be anticipating a recovery Assuming that six months down the line or nine months down the line or 12 months down the line, we are indeed in a world which is seeing some kind of recessionary pressure. But at that time, it's possible that uh, uh, everyone, including these IT stocks, are reflecting an expected recovery. Um, and, and so uh, just as at the, uh, at the point of very strong demand, which is what we are over the last, say, three to six months, these stocks have done poorly, we can have six to 12 months down the line at a point where demand is weak, the stocks might be doing very well as they're anticipating recovery down the line. So that's from a near term perspective, it's structurally right. We still think that these, some of these mid cap IT companies, which have very strong execution capabilities and are um, in the right areas of technology services, they can continue to multiply um, uh, their, you know, value, I mean, cash flows, revenues and whatnot, over the cycle and they're very attractively valued compared to any other segment of the market. From a valuation perspective, these IT services is the most compellingly valued when you look at from a cash flow perspective as we do. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Mr. Kemka, Nigel on this side. Uh, you know, the sector for the last one week or 10 days or so has been these mid-sized banks. You know, what's your take on it? Because if you look at the Nifty Bank, you'll say nothing much happened. But if you look at these tier two banks, well, they have had a party. Some part of the street believes that valuation argument Majority of the back, bad news is in the price. Would you be in that camp? So yes, in the near to short term, um, I mean near to medium term, um, the outlook from the cyclical perspective, if you were to believe a very, what, I, what we started off uh, talking about, a very upbeat corporate sector across from large to the smallest end, um, then the um, asset side problems, uh, which already have considerably resolved themselves, but the asset side problems to the extent they're still lingering in some of these mid or small banks, they would further be relieved and the growth environment would be stronger for all of them as well. So it is possible that that's what is helping them um, catch up on the um, on the valuation differential that, that you can find uh, on the surface for uh, some of these names compared to the better and larger cap names, Nigel. Mm. Okay, well, uh, Prashant, uh, we've run out of time, but it was really, sh it was short, the chat, but it was very informative. Thank you so much for joining us on Editor's Roundtable and have a Thanks. great weekend. Uh, with that, it's a wrap, but any uh, weekend uh, plans? Just to Thanks. add what uh, Prashant said, while I don't know about his uh, exposure into the private banks, uh, the smaller private banks, but I can tell you, he's taken a large exposure in one of the cement companies that you track very closely. Okay. So maybe it's a... <laughs> interesting one. <laughs> okay. Well, any weekend plans, guys? Relax. <laughs> Just go and relax. Sleep. Sleep, I, I, relax. I'm packing because I'm going to be heading to the mountains oh, next super. week. So, oh, there's, wow. a, there's a holiday, midweek holiday. So Nigel's making Good the most of, that. most of that. He's the youngest out of all of exactly. us. Exactly. Right? Right? <laughs> yes. Relax, sleep. Come on, guys. The movies, there are movies, there are things to watch. Go out there, have fun. All right, you folks have fun too. Uh, it's a wrap on another episode of Editor's Roundtable. Have a great weekend. We'll be back bright and early on Monday.